Are you truly living life or merely surviving? Whether you want more time, more love, more money, or whether you want it all, we want to help you get there. The best part? Everything you want lies on the other side of fear and self-doubt. It's time to take the leap with your host, Tiffany Toombs. Hello, everyone. Welcome back for this week's episode of Take the Leap. I am your host, Tiffany Toombs, and today I'm here to share another mindset technique and another lesson for you to start living your best life in any and all areas of your life. And so what I want to talk about today is the power of intention. My life completely changed when I came to understand just how powerful intention was and how living from intention in every day, in every moment, in every decision allows you to have more control over your life. So if we look at the unconscious mind, the unconscious mind is driven to always know that we are going to survive. It is our number one top of the to-do list thing that we have to make sure every day that we will survive. And so this need for survival puts a lot of people into control freak mode where things have to be done my way, it's my way or the highway, or they have to do everything themselves to know that it gets done right. The thing is, is that this ends up creating more tension, more stress, and ultimately leads to less chances of survival in the long run than it does if we were to live from intention and make decisions based on intention and not just living for the now. So the other thing it's important to know about our unconscious mind is that we are wired to seek pleasure now and to avoid pain now. And as long as you're living within these impulses, you will become somebody who jumps at shiny objects. Oh, look, I need to do this. Or, oh, look, this is a bright, shiny object over here that I'm interested in getting involved in. And what that does is it keeps you on the hamster wheel of life, keeps you in the proverbial rat race where you're constantly busy doing things. You're not necessarily moving towards any particular end outcome and your path shifts. These are the people who one day they're doing one thing, the next day they're doing another thing. Two weeks later, they have a whole new passion or hobby. And it's because it's making them feel good right at that moment. And they have the big ideal in their head, but it's not necessarily aligned with what they're truly passionate about, what they truly want in life, or what they're truly good at. And so when the rough times come, when the challenges and the obstacles come, and they will, because if there's one thing we can count on in life, it is the ebbs and flows. When those trials and tribulations come, they get knocked off kilter, and they're now in a place of pain. And so they seek out the next thing that is going to give them pleasure. So what intention does is it allows us to look at our life in a completely different light so that we can make decisions not based on the now, but on ultimately where we want to go. These are people that we also know as being called purpose-driven. So I like to think of life like a road trip. And right now I'm in Dallas. If I don't know If I'm driving to California or to New York, the best that happens is I just end up driving around in circles. That's the hamster wheel that I just mentioned that people get on and then they don't know how to get off or they only know how to hop from one hamster wheel to the next. What I want my intention for this episode for you, because everything I do comes from intention, is to help you figure out what is your highest intention for this life so that you can get off of the hamster wheel and start making decisions based on intention for you. When I was 13 years old, I was given my first personal development book from my mom, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People from Stephen Covey. And I kind of at that time, while it's the only type of book that I read now, I felt like I was being forced to learn when I wasn't at school. And I forced myself to finish it anyways. Little did I know how much of a foundation that book would lay for me later on in life. Really, the only 
principle from that book or the only habit that I remember was to begin with the end in mind. And this habit just made so much sense to me that if we don't know ultimately where our destination is, if I don't even know what state I'm driving to, never mind the specific city or the specific address, then how do I know how to get there? And so intention for me is not just knowing what is my intention for this episode, what's my intention for this day. It's ultimately knowing what is my intention for this lifetime and how can I make decisions now that cause me to make constant forward progression towards living that intention so that by the time I do get to my deathbed, I can say, yep, I've done that and I've done it well rather than having regrets on my deathbed. I read a book when I was living in Australia that brought me to tears. It's called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And this book was written by a woman who had been in palliative care for 20 years. Her name was Bronnie Ware. And she noticed that there was all these themes that when people were on their deathbed, there was five common themes that they had around the life that they had lived. And these five regrets of the dying, which is the name of the book, were, I wish I had known that happiness was a choice. I wish I had lived life according to my terms. I wish I had stayed in touch with family and friends. I wish I hadn't worked so hard. And finally, I wish that I had the courage to express my feelings. And I think when we get stuck in this hamster wheel, that sets us up to be on track to have at least one of those five regrets. We get so busy doing this shiny object thing now that we work really, really hard. We neglect our family and friends. We don't express our feelings. We don't feel happiness because we haven't achieved the ideal outcome that we want. We haven't found that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow And we act in all these ways that are not truly who we are. And even though you may work hard, do I work a lot or do I work hard? Absolutely, except I never see it as work or working hard because I'm doing something that I love. I'm doing something that is aligned with my passion and purpose in this life and So I'm happy every single day to get out of bed and to do it. I'm excited every single day to get up and to know that I get to do something that I'm so incredibly passionate about and help other people do. And so living a life of intention does more than just give us direction in the now. It ensures that we don't end up having any of those regrets so that we make the most out of this lifetime. So the activity that I give to my clients is I get them to close their eyes and to picture themselves as a fly on the wall at their funeral if they keep living life the way that they are now. If nothing else changes, what will their funeral be like? What impact will they have made on the people that are there? Are people there because they have to be or are people there because they want to be? because they want to celebrate such an amazing, full, well-lived life? Are they there because you had such an impact on their life and you changed their life in such an amazing way? And it doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter if it was baking the best apple pie or doing the best oil change. You could impact people's lives in a million, a billion different ways. But did you make an impact or were you that grouchy old person that just shunned everyone through life and had their guard up because they were waiting for that lottery ticket to finally win or for that pot of gold to show up at the end of the rainbow and then they would start really living? Did you live a life of when I get this, then I'll be happy when I do this, then I'll take some time off? Or did you live every day and squeeze every ounce of juice that you could out of the life? And now I want you to see your life, your funeral, having lived your best life. 
if you lived the purpose that you were here to live, if you truly lived that legacy, what would your life look like then? And what's the difference between the two? Are there more people at the second funeral or the first? Are the people at the second funeral happier, more celebratory of your life? And oftentimes, that's what people find. And so I want you to write down a statement. What is your intention for this life? Now, when I first did this exercise for myself, um, and I've even evolved the exercise since I first created it, but when I first wrote this exercise and did this intention statement for myself, I only knew the feeling that I wanted to evoke. I wanted people to be there celebrating my life because I had helped them become the best version of themselves. And so my first intention statement was just that. My intention for this life, my highest intention for this life, is to help people become the best version of themselves. Over the past 20 months, that has evolved into where it is now that I want to empower one million people to live an intentional life that's aligned with the truth of, the, of their soul. I want to empower them because I want to give them their power back. I want to help them find that confidence that they've lost somewhere along the line so that they can be the truest version of themselves. So that if they love music, then they play music. They don't go to a stuffy job and be an accountant all day. If they love defending people, then they go to law school, despite what the naysayers say. If they love art, if they love nature, whatever it is that they love, they find a way to incorporate that into their daily lives so that they're always doing the things that they're passionate about. Can you imagine how different the world would be if everyone was doing what they were truly passionate about? If everyone wasn't afraid to step into their power, if everyone was confident and comfortable in their own skin, there wouldn't be bullying or abuse rates or suicide rates that there are today. Because happy, healthy, healed people don't bleed all over other people. They don't lash out and drag other people down or hate on other people. And so when we start living a life of intention, all of that other need to focus on what anybody else is doing disappears. I don't have time to worry about what anybody else is doing. I've got a million people I need to empower. That's a lot for one person. So if I waste even a moment worrying about what somebody else is doing, that's a moment lost that I could be focusing on another person in the one million. And so knowing my highest intention, I now make every single decision every single day based on that intention. Should I eat at McDonald's or have a salad at home? Well, eating a salad at home is probably going to extend my life over a period of time and give me more time to help people. And given that I talk about health and how what you put in your body impacts how you think and your frame of mind, your state of mind, eating at McDonald's probably isn't going to empower a whole lot of people. Do I take on a new business opportunity? Or do I not? Well, does it allow me to empower more people? If it does, then I have to see if I have the time and the resources to do it. And if it doesn't, then it's an automatic no. I read this article, it's been about six or seven years ago now, by Mark Manson. He's the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And he wrote this book, this article, back when he was just blogging before he was putting out writing books and it was fuck yes or no and his whole the whole article was about living a life and only doing things that are a fuck yes jumping at shiny objects are not ultimately a fuck yes it's like a oh yeah that sounds good right now but it's not like a yes from the bottom of your soul burning desire to do this thing only the things that you're truly passionate about give you that kind of fuck yes and so I started living my life that way, but I still was confined by these boundaries of, well, I have to have a nine to five job and I don't think coaching will pay all of my bills. So I need to have something else and then I can just coach on the side. 
I can tell you I'm going to get to a million a whole lot faster doing it full time than I am doing it on the side while I'm running other businesses that take up 80 hours of my attention a week. And so when we live by intention, every moment matters. Every thought matters. And when you start to live by intention, then your thought patterns start to change automatically because you recognize that what you put out into the world is what you get back. Gary Zukov has an amazing book on this topic called The Seed of the Soul. And he talks about intention isn't just the doing. So we, we've all heard Newton's third law that an object in motion stays in motion and that what you put out comes back to you. We know this. And for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. We learn this in grade school. What we tend to think, though, is that in order for the object to stay in motion or for there to be an equal and opposite reaction, we have to actually do something. So it's okay if in my head I'm thinking negatively about someone or something, or even if I'm just talking to a friend and I'm saying something or, you know, saying something negative about someone or something. But what Gary Zukov says is that intention starts with our thoughts. And our thoughts have energetic energy. And I'll do an episode on quantum physics and quantum linguistics in the future. But for every thought that we have, that creates an energetic push that gets an equal and opposite reaction. And so when we talk about manifesting or when we talk about what you put out, you get back, what you sow is what you reap, all of those things basically mean that even your thoughts, even the thoughts that you allow yourself to have is what you get back. So if I'm thinking negatively about anybody, guess what is coming back to me? A whole bunch of crap. If I'm only focused on my intention, if I'm intentional down to my thoughts, down to the words that I choose to use in my thoughts, then what I'm getting back is something that I've intentionally created. I'm not waiting to win the proverbial lottery anymore. Instead, I'm getting back the thing that I truly want. And this is why intention is so powerful because you can manifest and create anything that you want when you start getting intentional and start paying attention to every single thing that you do. Every single thought that you have. Every single word that you allow to capture your attention. Because there's 1,500 words per minute that pass through our mind. And if we're not intentional about that, that can create a whole crap storm coming back to us that we didn't want. That distracts us from going on that road trip to where we want to go. So it's time to get intentional with your life. Stop leaving things to chance when you have so much more power over what your future looks like than what you realize. Where your life is today is a result of what you did 90 days ago. And so if you want your life in 90 days from now to look different to what it looks like now, now is the time to become intentional. Now is the time to recognize I, I play a role in this. In fact, I play the starring role in this. And so I'm going to take responsibility. I'm going to take ownership of that. I'm going to get intentional and decide how I want my future to look and make sure that I am doing everything in my power. I am playing every single ace to make sure that my life in 90 days looks how I want it to. So I would encourage you to do the exercise that I laid out in this episode for you. And if you want the worksheet that goes with it, I've only explained like the first part of the exercise. I have built out the exercise further so that you actually write down your core values 
to check in with every single day. If you want that whole exercise and you want the worksheet that goes with it, you can get it absolutely free. All you have to do is visit www.limitlessplaybook.com. It's part of the free 10-day training. I can tell you the intention worksheet comes out on day two of that exercise. So you can head over there and find that and go through the whole training that will help you get very, very intentional in life, very intentional down to the thought and the word so that 90 days from now your life looks more aligned with the second visualization of your funeral than the first if there was much difference there. If you're already living from purpose, from intention, I salute you because I understand the journey that it takes on that it takes to get to that point. So congratulations if you're already there. And if you haven't started yet, what are you waiting for? If you're waiting for a sign, here it is. I'm hold you can't see me, but I am holding up a sign that says just freaking do it. If you are listening on iTunes, please leave us a review. Uh, that will help us get this information out to more people so that more people can take the leap and we can have more happy, healthy, healed people in the world and, you know, just make the world a better place. One million. That's the goal. So please leave us a review and I will be back next week with an incredible interview from another highly successful person who has taken the leap in their life. Until then, now is the time to start living your life and live it from intention. Have an amazing day.